Well, Jackie, where are you? We gonna make it through this? Okay. All right. As it was explained to me, the criteria for the speaker tonight, there were three things that had to happen. One, he had to be free, didn't pay any money to get him. And number two, he had to be brief and get it over with in 10 minutes or so. And number three, this is supposed to be an inspirational speech. So I can accomplish the first two things, certainly the free business and the free life. Checked it out, and this is going to last about 12 minutes. And so I'm going to do my dead level best to inspire you folks tonight. Now, it's a whole lot easier for me here tonight because you see all of you people I know and I feel very, very comfortable with. I've had most of you since you were freshmen, watch you grow, sophomores and juniors and now seniors and fixing to get out of here. And so we have a special report, and it's better than having to look at an audience that you know, there's probably some English teacher out there, don't you imagine, Angela, that's taking notes on this and checking up on all my grammatical mistakes? <laughs> probably. <laughs> well, when I went to write this out tonight, and that's when I did it, under the pecan tree down there before I started. I got to reflecting back on my own graduation, and I can remember that just as well as if it were tonight. Uh, <clears throat> I walked out the front door of the the old farmhouse, and, and there was a little rock walkway that my granddad had built, and I went by and stopped and picked me a rose and stuck in my <coughs> brand new suit that I'd gone up to J.C. Penney's and Graham and bought for 40 bucks, and uh, then we went down to the graduation. Well, the fellow that was speaking there that night was a, was a federal judge. I, I remember him, he was a little short fellow about like this with brown kinky hair, and uh, was quite an esteemed fellow. But anyway, he made the statement that as we were there, he said, nobody listens to a graduation speaker, so it didn't make any difference what he says anyway. So I thought about that, but he went on and he made this speech. And he told this one story. I may have shared it with some of you before, but I'm going to share it again because that is the one thing. I don't remember his name, but I do remember this story. He told a story about this young man that was going to get married to this young lady. And the bride's father told him, well, since you're going to marry my daughter, I'll uh, give you the pick of my counter. He said, well, that's fine, her papa-in-law to be. And he said, all right, I'm going to put all my cows in this, this pen. And I'm going to drive these cows by, and you just decide which one you want, and you grab it by the tail. He said, okay. So he started driving the cows by, and the, the guy, he looks them over, and he said, well, that's not good enough, and maybe the next one will be better. And this went on until, at last, there was only one cow left. And he said, well, they don't have to take that one. So as he ran the last cow by, the old boy grabbed the cow's tail, and you guessed it, no tail. <laughs> well. You know, I've thought about that for all these years as, as, as they went by. And you figure out what the moral of that story is. I figured out it, it's, it's got to be two things. You know, maybe, maybe the real moral to it is, is if you strive for perfection, real perfection, to the point where you rule out common sense, you're going to be awfully disappointed in life. And that was the one thing I thought. And then maybe the other one is, something that you'll have to learn to deal with is don't miss your opportunity sitting around and waiting and thinking something better will come by. Set reasonable goals for yourself and don't sit around idly waiting for that perfect thing to come by. Okay, uh, you know, your, your theme, times of your life, I tried to write this into this so that it would be in fitting with that. And so, as I thought about that, I looked up a bunch of definitions that all these wise people had made of life. So, I searched them all, and you know, I like <coughs> short, trite things. And this one definition stuck with me because it is so true of my life, anyway. And here's that definition. Life, simply something that is very short. <coughs> 
as you look back on your life, boy, it's taken you a long time to get to 18 years old. But it won't take you nearly that long to get to be 50. <laughs> as I look back on it, you know, Linda and I, this August, will celebrate our 25th wedding anniversary, I think. And it doesn't seem like there's any time ago since we got married or the kids were born or anything. It flies, and the older you get, the faster it gets. And I know all of the people out in the audience that are up in that 50 and 60 and 70 and some of these, boy, you look back, and the older you get, the faster she flies. So that's something for you to think about. And uh, I just wanted to remind you, as you go through your next few years, to remember this little cow story I just told you. And don't, don't spend your life just idling in a way. You can look around you at, at people that graduated last year and year before last. You'll find some of them going out and really doing something with their lives. And then you'll find some of them just doing menial jobs, going around without any direction. Don't do that. Take after something. Get yourself a direction. I know when I graduated, all the people sitting back there, Christy, they, they all knew what they wanted to do except me. I didn't have any idea in the world what I wanted to do. But I knew I was going to go to college and I was going to try to find myself somewhere along the way. So, off I go. So, follow that advice. Don't matter whether you know what you want to do or not. You'll find your way and just go do something. In line with that, you know, the preparation. You've got to prepare yourself for life ahead. And the preparation that you must do is both physical and mental. I know in my military training, one of the, the things that has stuck with me is a, a little saying that they that they come loose with, especially in OCS, and they got it plastered all over the wall everywhere. And what it says is this. Even the poorest of plants executed with enthusiasm is much more likely to succeed than the very best of plans executed without them. And that's the truth. The advice there that I could give you is whatever you do, you know, you look at it and you figure it out. If you're going to be a salesman, if you're going to be a success in life, you're going to have to find out what you want to do, you're going to have to believe in it, and you're going to have to sell it. And to be able to sell anything, you've got to be enthusiastic and go to it. Uh, I couldn't, uh, you know, pass up tonight without mentioning Brad Pippen and his graduation from West Point. He graduated, of course, Wednesday, you know. And uh, I remember very, very well whenever I took him up there in rolling just four years ago. The, you know, he knew he was academically prepared, and he knew he was physically prepared. But he was a kid from our little town, and that's an awful big place. And nobody's ever done it before. But he wasn't afraid. He, all, he was in awe of it a little bit, but he went at it like, I'm here, I'm going to stay, and I'm going to succeed. And he, and he did. He, he graduated in the top 5% of his class. And, you know, I hope in four years or five, whatever it takes, I think we'll be up a little longer, uh, that we can look back at all the proud achievements of you people, just as we have looked back on those many, many classes. Uh, I jotted down a, a couple of things here. Uh, you know, I worked very, very closely with Brad over the years, and, and we, he wrote down lots of things, that, you know, little cliches that I've picked up over the years, and, that he particularly liked, and I jotted down a couple of them here, you know. One of them says, I aim at the stars. You might miss that sucker, you know, but that's better than aiming at the ground that you hit every time, see. It doesn't matter if you're totally successful or not. If you're shooting at lofty ideals and ideas, well, don't worry about it. If you don't, if you're not totally successful, the pursuit is what makes it important anyway. And another one here I wrote down was, if you think you can, you can. And if you think you can't, you're surely right. Now, uh, at this time, over the years, I've got on my briefcase 
a poem. Now, all of the kids that have ever been associated with me in my competitive business, I made them memorize this poem. I've had it always. Eric, come up here, please, and read that poem. It's called Invictus. Out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is blood, bloody, but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horrors of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Thank you. That poem has served me well. Get you a copy of it and carry it with you. Now then, to go on with this, and this is where I started once to start the speech, and then I said, well, this thing is not organized anyway, so why try to mess it up and write some coherent speech? So, <clears throat> Here comes the next quote. Some fellow by the name of Alexander wrote it a long, long time ago. And it goes like this. In memories, you're rich. In all other things, you are poor. Now, when you start reflecting on life and what it means, and you look back, look at, the, look at what has happened to you. I don't know exactly how to say this, but you know, all of the good things that have happened to you in your life, you look back and you look back on with pleasant memories, right? And then even the bad things, isn't it strange how the bad things that happen to you after they pass, then you can look back and reflect on them and they too become very fond, very precious memories. And that's, that's the way life has been, that's the way life will be. Now, I wanted you to think of your memories sort of like a bank. Things that you store away. Think of the memories that you have of your parents and your grandparents, your friends, your teachers, your coaches, all the people that you've known and associated with. You couldn't be where you are here tonight without the help and support of all these people. And don't forget that what they have done, they will continue to do. It's not like it's over. You can't get along in this world without their continued support. And, uh, <clears throat> well, I'll make it over this next hump. You know, when I was in the hospital last fall, and all of you kids sent me the cards, flowers, whatever, I'm going to make it. Uh, gosh, it meant so much to me. And uh, all those nurses up there said that they never... <clears throat> So anything like that. Hmm. Yeah. So now to a more stable topic of conversation. All right. Some treasures that you might not be so aware of that, that you really need to think about. I know a lot of you do, but think about it. Think about your minds that you, God gave you, your healthy bodies, hmm. your family, your friends, that spirit that I'm talking about whatever you want to call it, but what keeps you going, what drives you, what motivates you. And lastly, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you to think about your country. Some of you have been places, and some of you haven't, but this is the best place in the world to live. Okay. Now as you go your way, in the next few years, do everything you can to preserve these, these memories you have and, and to enhance them. Take care of your bodies to the best you can. I know I seem like I want to be given that advice, but take care of your body. If, if you can do something for your country, well, do it. If you can do something for your fellow man, we'll do that too. Okay, my aim here tonight, as some of y'all you know, reminded me, is to motivate you, to inspire you, to make you feel good. 
And I know this is a happy time, a sad time. It's a strange mixture of emotions. But I want you to know that uh, I have tried. And I hope that when this is all said and done, that y'all can sit back there and say that tonight, tonight was the best time of my life so far. Now, as, as we leave here, or I get through with this here tonight, you know, I, I, I jotted down here that if you can, and do your dead level best to do it, go on living your life the next 10, the next 20 years. Y'all are going to have a reunion, aren't you? You get it together 10 years or so? You'll come back and you'll look and you'll say, gosh, I'm rich. Look at all of the things that have happened to me, you know, that I'm proud of, that I'm happy with, it is the more things, I've done this, I've done that, and if you are, I mean, you can talk to anybody that you want to, you can talk to people that's got money, and you can talk to people that don't have money, but unless they have friends and family, unless they have memories, they're not rich, and they're not happy, and okay, then this here is completely out of context, but I chucked it in here because my granddad told me this, and I believe it, and I believe it today. He said, of course he was talking to me, but he said, as you go through your young life, choose your wife or your husband very carefully because of all the decisions that you'll ever make, this is the one most important. Think about it. Well, Jackie, I've nearly made it, kid. We're gonna make it an hour or Now then, I wrote this down here and I'm truly gonna try to stick with it, okay? And it goes like this. Y'all have been rarely privileged here tonight because you have not only heard one speech, but you've heard two. My first one and my last one. <laughs> I'm much more comfortable, you know, I've always, for all these many, many years, I sit back here and have to get your tassel straight. So if you didn't have rivals hanging down from you and call off your name and get you in line and tell you when to step off and all that sort of thing. That's more in my line of business than it is here. And I told you when you asked me, you know, that I am no public speaker. And I have absolutely proven that beyond a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> uh, about the last thing here I wanted to say, you know, I was, I was talking to Miss, Mrs. Crutcher back out in the foyer out here not too long ago, and uh, she said she heard that I was going to speak to you tonight, and, and uh, I said, yes, because they asked me. I said, I cannot figure out for the life of me why they would want me to, but anyway, because they asked me, I'm going to do it. And since then, you know, I've talked to several people, and, and the people that have spoken to graduating classes here is a long list of famous people and maybe not so famous people, but certainly people that have made a much greater mark in life than I have by some people's judgment in a way. And every one of them I've talked to, you know, like Mr. Purcell, he's been and done lots of things, big time. But that man was extremely proud of being invited back here to speak to his old school, where he went to school. Larry McMurphy was, was the same way. Well, it was an extreme honor for them. And as I shall struggle with this here statement, and if I get by it, we'll get it made. I've had uh, lots of things happen to me in my life, lots of honors. But thank you. This is the greatest. Thank you.